Canon Selfie CP910. Available drivers 0 for OS X 10.11 El Capitan. So in this box is one black colored Selfie CP90 printer from Canon. And in here is another one. It's a white one and I just got it back today, back from repair. So I'm actually filming this test video on my Sony A7R Mark II with the fisheye converter lens. So it's all fisheye and this is just a test video but I want to make something somewhat useful so later on when I do videos um, I'll be better at it because it's for me being good in front of a camera is not natural so that's what I'm doing. So I've got this camera back, uh, sorry I've got this printer back and it's all fixed, it had a jam and Canon service was quite good. They gave me back a fresh, a fresh ribbon, which you can see in here. It's a printer. Oh, okay, now that was a pretty terrible, horrible noise. I have no idea what that was. I had finished recording this very impromptu, random, rough video, put it into Final Cut because it wouldn't stitch together with MP4 joiner. So I had to go through Final Cut, which I don't like to do for these practice videos because I'm already okay at editing, but being in front of the camera, that's a bit scary. But anyway, the sound, I don't know where it came from. It was working fine as you could hear and then later it worked fine again. I think I was getting some sort of Bluetooth interference because it went away. Um, not good and I wasn't monitoring it because I am just recording myself and there's no camera operator. So, I don't know what's up with that. Um, I've had a bit of spotty, I've had, I've had a little bit of a spotty kind of, what do you call? Ah, this is tricky being in front of video. Anyway, my experience with this has been a little bit spotty because there's a few times I haven't had any sound from this Bluetooth receiver. The other time I was at Clock and Flap, and I think the contact was bad between the camera and the multi interface shoe, which is here. The receiver plugs onto the special Sony hot shoe. It's a standard hot shoe, but it has extra little contacts which can which a device like this one can draw power and you can do microphone, you can power a light. You can put different accessories. It's, it's quite cool. I really like it, but uh, it's not always reliable and it's a bit frustrating. Intermittent problems are frustrating because you don't know what's causing it. This is Bluetooth, so maybe there was some Bluetooth interference. There is so much interference noise around here. But anyway, hopefully this works and I won't have to re-record it again. This video hasn't been that easy. I had to re-record bits. I changed the lens and I lost a whole bunch of video and when I put it back on, when I played it back, hey, I am missing a lot of footage so I had to re record that. But on the good side, it means this video is going to be even longer which means I get more practice being front of the very, very scary lens which is this thing right here. And it's scary because I actually put this up on YouTube, mistakes and all. And whoa, I need a bit of a seat. I'm gonna put this down here so I can ramble and rant and I don't need a tripod. I got a fisheye lens. This is like a big expensive GoPro fisheye. You know, we'll do, we'll do random, rough, grungy, all that. Man, I don't know why people watch this. <laughs> it's just me ranting and talking about stuff. And still I get 15 or so hits per video and they can't all be me. Maybe the first five or so are me, but someone's watching this and they're not leaving comments. Leave a comment so I can get your feedback. Tell me I suck. Tell me you love it. Tell me why you watch this. I think my mind works in this chaotic way. 
it's stream of consciousness, different thoughts entering my mind and I verbalize it. And I can continue doing that. I can talk about how I'm an introvert and how my mind thinks or why sometimes I think I'm an ambivert or whatever. But we should get back to the photography, shouldn't we? Okay, so let's get back to the, ca the camera. Some bits, sorry, I keep calling it a camera. It's not a camera, it's made by Canon, but it's a printer. So here's the printer. And I don't know, I don't know where this cut off, this video cut off, the sound cut off. So I'm just gonna repeat a bit and you know, this might double up, but it doesn't really matter. It's a test channel. Who's going to be watching this? Who's going to care? This is just, just a test. It's not serious. It's not the real thing. But funnily enough, I get better at videos by doing these. Okay. So this went back for service and they actually gave me back two ribbons. And I'm very, I'm very happy with that because I had one ribbon jam, which was kind of full. It jammed and I lost that ribbon. I put another ribbon in and that jammed again because there was this little piece of paper stuck inside. And it is part of the, it is part of the paper, but it shouldn't detach and get jammed inside the printer. So the technician actually found this little slither of paper, which comes off the paper that you print, you kind of rip it off. In fact, when they tested the camera, camera, when they tested the printer, they gave me back the, the test shots just to prove that it works. And I'm gonna show them to you here. Not my photography, but test photos, and they're quite nice photos too. Well, maybe not this one's a bit cheesy. There you go, you can see that. Lovely autofocus, face detection on the A7R Mark II. I love that. This one's a bit better. It's a bit of a color test. They're very saturated, these. They, they saturate them. They make the color bright. So you can really see that this, this printer can print nice colors. Look at that. You can see the gloss, glossiness there. I'm not sure if I mentioned it while it was cut off, but this is a dye sublimation printer, which means it melts different colored bits of plastic, CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and also clear coat. It puts a clear protective coating over the top. So if you know anything about graphic design or printing, those are your process colors, your print inks. So. It works a bit like that, but it melts plastic on it. And you can actually see the ribbon. This is showing the yellow part of the ribbon. And that, that kind of goes into the printer and it's got a little heaty thing which melts this straight onto the paper. So it's got another paper thing. Now, the last one's not so colorful, but quite a cool action shot of a yacht crew or a, or a catamaran crew. I'm not quite sure what that is. I think it's a catamaran. Y if you know, why don't you leave a comment and tell me if I'm right or wrong. And I was gonna show you these little side bits that come off. And the back, oh, they didn't give me the postcard ones. Um, my other ones, my other paper has little little postcard things, but these ones say Canon, which is not quite as cool. So these things kind of break off like that. There you go. There you go. And one of these got stuck inside it. I have no idea how it did, but it probably has to do something with this table. I was running the printer here and it's a mess and Come on, what kind of creative would I be if I kept everything clean and tidy? I'm gonna check this out in the bin. Oh, there's no bin. I'll leave it here and it's probably gonna get sucked up again and go back to service. There are no bin liners, but I have this. There you go, you 
troublesome little piece of paper. You cost my printer a couple weeks in the hospital, the Cannon Hospital, AKA Technical Service Center or whatever they call it. So that bit broke off, ended in there, jammed my printer and they were kind enough to give me two ribbons back so I don't get to waste all the inks I have. I'm gonna repeat a bit of this, I might have shown it, I can't remember, it's a test video, but I have all these boxes of ink and each one has 36, 36, yeah, 36 prints. It's got enough ribbon and paper and you kind of feed it in there. There's a separate tray that you put the paper in. And you can get different sizes too. You can get little business card sort of credit card sized paper, which is great. If you want smaller ones, you can get sticker paper. It's quite a cool camera. It's a pity that Canon don't make drivers for it, which is what I explained earlier, but it's at the end of the video because the sound stuffed up. This is a bit like uh, in Inception, it's a bit everywhere. I don't really know what I mean by that. So anyway, this was my test video and rant about the Canon selfie printers. But I should probably tell you what's good about them too, because it's, it's not helpful to be all negative. So maybe it's a good thing my, my sound cut out. I'm gonna put the camera here again. I need to prop it up, I've got a remote control. This is how, this is how pro I'm gonna get for these test videos. And if you look around, there are tripods and legs and stands aplenty. There's a few there. There's a few there, but no, nah, I was gonna put it on a table here on top of a remote. Fisheye lens, everything in focus. What I like about these printers. The color is not bad. There is a little bit of smearing. Um, the way these work is this printer runs, this page runs through the printer and it very quickly heats up the ink, but it has to find a balance between speed and quality. So the faster it goes, the less time it has to kind of print, which means it loses a bit of detail. Now to anyone's eye, these look fine. They look pretty much the same as a photo you get made at a lab. But if you're a photographer, a very picky one, you may pick out things that aren't perfect about it. For example, and you really have to look so hard. Problem is, once you know it's there, you might, might bug you. It leaves like a little mark there. It's so faint, you can barely see it, but it's on every single print. And I, I did something about it. I Googled it and that's right, I went back to the showroom and asked them and they actually showed me that it's on all of them. Something that most people wouldn't pick up. So if you're looking at it here, just the, the smallest little line here. And it's something to do about when it moves. It takes longer at that point, which is why it leaves a darker, it leaves darker ink. Um, this is so nitpicking. Um, it is fine for 99% of uses. This is not a gallery exhibition print that you're gonna frame and sell for tens of thousands of dollars. These are just little fun photos and that's what I love about it. It's a fun printer. It's a bit slow, which is why I've got two of them. So I can daisy chain them. I think it's called print, print something. It's print. Ch print chain? I'm not sure. Anyway, it's really easy on Apple, although I haven't got it to work and I didn't have time to test it last time. So I should be honest and say, I didn't actually get it to work last time and I need to continue testing it. But, well, I have two of them so I can spit them out faster. The problem is it's still a little bit slow. It takes about a minute to do a full color print. And if you're doing events, well, you have groups come in, there may be five people 
that's going to be five minutes before you get five prints. If you have two printers, that's going to halve it. But I thought it was manageable. Um, and I do have to work on the the IT side, trying to figure out how to get it properly working. Uh, it's an Apple thing. It's it's designed so you can connect two of the similar or same printers, and it will send the print pool to the f the one that's more available. So a little bit more testing in order, but yeah, not too bad. I love the size and portability, and it's quite fun. I have little sticker ones which I haven't used yet, but. I do want to print little Josh Takes Photos stickers and give it to people or stick them around town, I don't know, stick them on posts around town and do some free advertising, sort of not quite legally or a bit more subver subversive. So, well, something like that. Or give them out to people, stick them on my own stuff. I want to stick it on my suitcase, stuff like that. So. That's what's cool about it. Let me see if there's anything else. Of course, I don't plan these videos. I don't come up with a list and actually prepare. This is just a test video, which I keep saying. You must be sick of me saying that. Um, they're fun. You can actually plug a battery to it, which I don't have, but I want to, or an AC adapter and run them somewhere where there's no power. And that is the other reason I got two of them. I, I see people in Mong Kok in this street called Seyung Choi, Seyung Choi Street in Mong Kok. And they do like Polar, Polaroid style instant photos, take photos, print them out and give it to people. Whoa! And it is a bit of a fad and people line up. But I thought, why not do something cooler? Why don't I give people instant photos? But not copy what everyone else does, start something that's more unique. So if you stay tuned, I'm going to be doing some light painting stuff. And I've got a few ideas of how to do it. And it's a little bit technical because it's really bright. And light painting is traditionally done in a darkened room. So that's one of the other reasons I got this. Another one is mobile printing is quite cool. If you get the battery, which Canon can sell you or an AC pack. I was actually thinking of making some sort of bodysuit to wear and do instant printing that way. So I can have the Protog, which is my other channel, have the helmet, take the photo, have it print out and it's all done. I thought that'd be kind of gimmicky, but fun. I still need to do that. Um, and the problem is it doesn't support Sony cameras, which is what I like using. So I might try it with the Canon and I do have a Canon printer, which is a Canon G9, not G9X, just a G9. No, it's a G12. It's a G12, and it can do that. Uh, it's not a great camera. It's old, so maybe I'll borrow someone's DSLR and do it that way. I don't know, but a lot of possibilities. These camera, these these printers are really fun, and I will be doing a little bit more of them. The last thing I should mention is if I do this on a more professional level, I want prints to spit out real quick, 10 seconds each. So I've been eyeing a more professional level dye sublimation printer, which is the DNP DS40, I think it is. Definitely 40. I think it's DS. It might be something else. But that is a professional level dye sub printer that is worth having a look at. A lot more expensive. It has a big roll of paper and a cutter, so you can churn them out quick. You don't have to keep refilling the, the paper and the ribbon, which isn't too bad. It does hold about 15 pieces of paper, so you refill it every 15, and the ribbon goes for a full 36, which is a pack. So every 15 shots, you have to, you have to change it and that is something else I should mention. If I ever do this video review for the Canon selfies in a proper video where I edit and talk about it. So I will do that. I will do that video. I'll set up a bit more of a display. I'll get it set up. I'll get it working. We'll test out 
the, the air print, we'll test it all out and we'll do a little show on it. It's low priority because I've got more exciting stuff to do, but well, that'd be good. So this is the practice for that video and practice in general. <sighs> you must be sick of me talking. So I'm going to cut it here and we'll go back to back in time through the power of video editing to where I was in the mirror taking off the lenses. Oh no, I was here and I was going to the mirror to take off the lens and I just found out that when you change the lens, it stops the recording and that is something I didn't know before, which is a bit annoying because, okay, <laughs> this is going to be really long, but it's annoying because I don't mind changing the lens and putting a new one on and keeping one long recording going because if I ever need to sync sound, let's say I have an external recorder to record the sound, then I don't want to keep syncing each clip every time I change the lens. I'll have to sync it again, sync the audio from a separate device to the main recording. So I just want one long cut, sync the audio at once, boom, it's all there. Um, just a bit annoying in, in, in the editing room. I'd rather not have to click the mouse and find the right video clip and do all that. Um, aside from that, Final Cut does a pretty decent audio syncing and some people use software called Plural Eyes, like more than one eye, to sync up audio and video and that might be a bit faster and it might solve this problem and it might be a bit quicker so I can play around with that. It's a plug-in and it costs money and it's not exactly cheap, so, well, I like to keep things simple. I'm really going to cut it here and go back to that last video. So, yeah, let's continue on, on the review to where we were before in three, two, one. So, why do I have two of these printers? Well, I've got a lot of ink, as you can see in here. Plenty of ink. Each one of these little boxes is... A color ink and paper set. A little dusty there. It is 4R size, so it's postcard size, and it's got a hundred prints in there. No, sorry, it's got 36 plus ink. The size is 100 by 148 millimeters. So a hundred each, and they're 88 bucks Hong Kong, so you can do the conversion. And I've got a lot of these. Now, there is something that really annoys me about this printer. And as you saw in our, the opening video, we have this problem here. OS X 10.11 El Capitan Canon has not yet determined if this product will be compatible with the operating system selected. Please refer back to this site in the in near future for updates. Well, that means if I'm running OS X 10.11 I can't actually install the drivers for this printer. Now, that's not the worst one because I can still print. There are a few ways. I can use the memory card, take it out of the computer, and then stick it into the memory card slot. So if I grab one of these memory cards, you will see this printer has an SD card slot. And this is the CP, CP910, which is also Wi-Fi. So that one, this model has the SD card. Um, I think it's the 810, but I could be wrong, has a compact flash, which is the big one that some other cameras use. And I think the new one, which is the th model 1000, the CP1000, I think it has both. So that's one way you can print. The other way is you can use Wi-Fi and you can air print it. But then you need to set up a Wi-Fi network. So if I am, at a location, at an event, and I just want to print off my printer. I can shoot tethered, and I just want to shoot, I just want to print straight off my camera. No, I can't do that, because they don't have drivers for El Capitan. That said, I am not running El Capitan because of this whole reason. I am running about this Mac. Oh, there you go. I am still running Yosemite. And I had this problem before. When I was running Yosemite, when I upgraded, I was shooting an event, and suddenly, I could not print. 
and I downloaded the drivers, but they weren't on. So that frustrated me. I couldn't print and I kind of promised I would. So that was really annoying and I didn't have time to set up a Wi-Fi network and I had to get it going and it didn't work and it did before, so rather annoying. So fast forward to half a year later, Canon still haven't caught up. So before when I was running Yosemite, no drivers because they were too slow. They're about a year behind and then when they write the drivers, obviously Mac OS X is on the next version. So I don't know when they're going to come up, come up with new drivers. They're taking way too long. But this is going to be two years I can't print properly. And it's a real shame. This is, this is so behind. Like, they're kind of, you make a printer, even the new model doesn't have it. They're asleep at the wheel. You buy a printer and you can't print off it properly without doing all these workarounds. So, this is kind of why Canon is lacking behind in terms of the camera game. How can you release a new, cam uh, a new printer and not have the latest drivers? And Mac, people that use Mac, update. It's really easy to update. So, when you buy this, you can't even connect it properly. Really annoying. So this is my gripe for today about the Canon cameras, uh, Canon, Canon printers. Um, and I really hope they fix this up. They cannot be so slow. What happens when Mac moves on to the next one? Do I wait? A, do I wait a full year when I upgrade my Mac? and then get the drivers, have it working for maybe a week or a month and then upgrade it and then suddenly everything's broken again. This is way too slow. Uh, it's just not what you expect from a company that makes or wants to make the world's best products. Um, that said, there are other hacks. You can run Glutenberg or Glutenberg, I don't know how you pronounce that, but there are hacks. People have written drivers that you can store and I can't figure out how to do it because I'm not an IT guy, I'm a photographer. I don't spend all my time writing code and playing with drivers. I just want stuff to work. It's kind of why I use stuff that I think is the best because I need to rely on it. And I've got two of these so I can print quicker, but I can't use them and I haven't used them for about half a year since I upgraded and I'm going to have this new problem when I get my new computer. Hopefully in the next few days I'm going to have a new computer, a new iMac because this one's aging and it's going to be on El Capitan so I'm going to have the same problem. So do I use the laptop and keep it on a lower version so I can print off, I can print at events. I might do that but I'm not happy because then I can't upgrade the computer and it's running old software and then I can't upgrade my other stuff because that needs new software. It's, it's, a, it's a real mess. So I really hope that Canon fix this. And that's kind of why I'm doing this little video. So I think I've covered it. I wouldn't mind doing a little bit more play with this. Um, I can tell you a bit about my setup here. I am using the the Zeiss, no, it's not a Zeiss, it's a Sony G lens, I believe. Uh, 28 millimeter with the fisheye converter, which I will actually take off here. You can see, you can see it here in the mirror. Focus, okay, so this fisheye lens. And we're back. And I just noticed that when I took off the lens, it stopped recording. So I'm gonna try again and see if Taking this lens off actually stops the recording. Okay, I'm, I've got it here. I have got the catch, and then I'm taking it off now. Okay, and it, it stopped recording. You can see I've taken it off, and I had to press restart again. I'm gonna try to put it back on and see if it stops recording. And there you have it. When you take the fisheye converter lens off, it actually stops the recording, which I didn't actually know. So I am going to go pull out another lens, and it will do. Let's grab this one, and I'm going to see if it stops the recording. Okay, here we go. So I have got the lens release, and I'm about to take it off. Three, two, one, and we're back. So as soon as I took the lens off, 
I could see the record button, the record red letters change from rec to standby or standby. Let me see what it says actually. Back again. When I take it off, it actually says S T B Y. Stubby, 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 okay? So when, when you're recording with this thing, it actually pauses when you change the lens. I didn't know that. It stops the recording. So we lost a bit of video there, but that's fine. What were we talking about? We were talking about the, the Canon Selfie CP90. I think I covered it all. Anyway, um, I might just repeat the key points. Canon, not very happy that you're so slow in writing drivers and I have a computer that I keep up to date but I can't use your printers because you don't write the drivers for the latest versions and that makes everything a mess. Do I not upgrade my operating system but then I can't run the latest software because maybe Final Cut or some other software needs a later version of Mac OS or do I keep it not upgraded and run that or do I downgrade it and use a separate computer it's a mess I shouldn't be in this problem I shouldn't have this problem to deal with new drivers should be written for new printers in fact this CP90 is very current I'm not sure if I still sell it but they have the CP1000 and that is a brand new brand new printer and it's got the same problem it doesn't have drivers and you buy you can go buy it in the store right now and bring it home and not be able to connect it to your computer properly you have to do all these workarounds and it's just a pain in the ass so really not happy with that I would like Canon being an industry leader in photography and in printers to to not be to be like an industry leader there are other people wanting to be number one your competitors Sony and Nikon and Epson and so many people would love to to do that so are you getting lazy is it really that hard to write drivers do you need to hire a few programmers I don't know but get get that sorted Canon it's really it's really not on. Anyway, that's enough. So thanks for watching my test channel. This is a test channel where I practice being good in front of camera. So they're a little long. It's fine because I get more time to practice. And if you did watch up to this far, thanks for watching. And I hope that you got something out of it. And I bet you can't wait for my proper channel, which is coming up soon. Once I feel a little bit more comfortable being in front of camera and doing all this video stuff with different cameras the Sony a7R Mark II little Bluetooth Bluetooth little uh, microphones that's the blue light you see here different cameras of course GoPros around here on top of my Therm Wonderwear and Osmo cameras and little point and shoot great little cameras even the iPhone so testing all that and yeah I've got some I've got a great channel coming up for you and I am practicing and getting good at it and we're at day 20 right now and that means I'm that means I'm 20% through and there will be a little bit more to go before I feel really good at this and you know practice makes perfect so I'm getting there and I'm rambling, so I'm going to cut this. And thanks for watching. Josh Tam's Video Diary. All right. See ya. Where's that record button? All right. Bye.